Father God in heaven, in Jesus' name we come, Lord, we bless you. God, we praise you. We honor you, Father God, for just being God, for who you are, for what you do. We thank you for another privilege, another honor, Father God, to come before you and to uh, read your word, study your word, to heal your word. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that your word is swift, your word is powerful, your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins, forgive us for messing up, forgive us for falling short, that your word, Father God, will minister to us, that we will take your word, and your word will make a difference in our lives, that your word, Father God, will fall on good soil, that your word, Father God, will penetrate our hearts and with conviction, Father God, with confidence, and Lord, we ask you, Father God, to continue to walk with us as we study your word, that we take men, women, boys, and girls, nothing other than your word. And Lord, we ask you, Father God, to give us the victory and you keep the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. the name of the Lord. Yes, God's hand is the hand that we need to hold on to because his hands are, un are unchanging. He has the unchanging hands. In other words, God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. And we come tonight to praise him, to worship him, to glorify him one more time because he has given us another opportunity. And for that, we are grateful and we are thankful to God for another opportunity. Let's look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. In the New Testament, the book is 2 Thessalonians to chapters 3, and we're closing out this book for tonight. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 13 through 18 is where we will be tonight. I do understand we closed out last week with verse 13, but I believe that it's a part of the second two, the last two pericopes that we need to look at. It is included, verse 13 is included in that pericope. On last week, we closed out with 13 so we can make our point clear that God wants us to make sure that we don't get weary and well done. Yes. Yeah, God wants us to stick with it. Hang in there. Don't give up. Don't give out and don't give in. He wants us to stick with what we're doing. Stay with the Lord and stay with his word. Amen. Amen. Regardless of what comes along, regardless of what new deal shows up, God wants us to stay with his word, the word of God. Is what keeps us who we are and blesses us along the way. It is the, what we do that is upright for the Lord, that we are able to bless him, and he is blessing us through what we believe about him. Yes, we are to hold on to God's unchanging hand. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 13 through 18 is where we are on tonight. The Apostle Paul has spoke very well in, in First and Second Thessalonians to let us know that there are some, some false doctrine and some false teaching out there. He says to us, as he said to the church at Thessalonica, there's some false teaching out there. And whatever you do, stick with the word that has been written unto you. Stick with the word of God, the Holy Writ, the Holy Bible. Stay with the Holy Bible of God. Regardless of what the internet does, regardless of what Jet Ebony does, regardless of, of what uh, Metropolitan does or cosmo Cosmetology, regardless of what magazine says what, regardless of what Playboy uh, says in, in its reading, stick with the word of God. Oh, that's right. Apostle Paul launches an attack on, on those who are sitting idle. He says, whatever you do, don't be idle. And if you got some who are idle among you, don't fellowship with them. He says, as a man does not work, he ought not eat. He told, we told you on last week that some people among them was living off other people. So he closes out. In verse number 12 and says that you need to understand that men ought to work quietly and as they work quietly they ought to eat their own bread eat their own food in other words men ought to make food by which they eat they ought not live off other people he says if a man doesn't work he ought not eat 
It didn't say if a brother been laid off, he ought not eat. It didn't say if a sister can't find a job, she ought not eat. It, didn't, it did not say to us that if a person is on furlough, he, he or she should not eat. What it's saying to us, those who are healthy, those who are strengthened, those who have strength in their body, who flat out refuse to eat, he says, you shouldn't feed them as a family member, and the church certainly shouldn't feed them as a member of the gospel, a member of the church of Christ. So he goes on in verse number 13, is where we pick up on tonight. And what he, said, what he says is, but as for you, brethren, do not grow weary in doing good. He said to us, those of us who are walking according to the word of God, those of us who are walking according to this epistle that's written in 2 Thessalonians, he says, don't you get weary. Don't you get worn out. Don't you get tired. Don't fail. Don't faint. Don't get weary. He says to us, don't even get weak in well-doing. Don't, don't just throw up your hands and holler and walk off. He says, whatever you do, don't get tired of doing well. Don't get tired of doing that which is righteous. Don't get tired of doing those things that are written in the holy word of God. He says, stick, it, stick with it. Stay with it. Be firm in it. God will establish you in it. Whatever you do, make sure you stay with the word of God. Just keep walking in the word. We are in a pandemic now. And it's not just a health pandemic. It's a faith pandemic. It is a faith pandemic that we are walking in right now. Mm -hmm. People lack faith in God. They put faith in other things, but they do not put faith in God. So there's a faith pandemic going on all around us. We put faith in our houses, our cars, our, our burglar alarms. We put faith in all the things around us, but we have a problem with putting faith in God. We put faith in our loved ones, but we have problems and issues when it comes to putting our faith in God himself. Uh, the Apostle Paul says, don't get weary in well-doing. Keep your faith strong. Keep your faith in God the Father himself. Stay with the word of God. So he says, don't get weary. You, brethren, those of us who are saved, when he uses the word brethren or brethren or brother, he's saying, whatever you do, you're born again. Stick with what is in the word of God. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 13 through 18 is where we are tonight. We close out Second Thessalonians. He says, don't you get weary. Verse 14, he says, and if anyone does not obey our word in this epistle, note that person. Note, N-O-T-E. This word note means to mark. This word note means to make sure that you are aware of that person. He says, whatever you do, if any does not obey or hearken to or accept the command and refuse to obey the word of God, if anyone does not listen attentively to the word of God, he says, note that man. The word notes means to mark him, to put a distinguished mark about that person. And the reason why you're putting this mark on this person is so that you can avoid them. <laughs> this word in the original Greek means to note them or mark them in such a way that you can avoid them. He says it right here, verse 14, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 14. And if anyone does not obey our words in this epistles, who, who is this our He's talking about Paul himself. He's talking about Timothy and Silas. He's saying, if anybody you run into who are brothers in the faith and they do not obey the word of this epistle, the words that are written in 2 Thessalonians, especially 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, he says, note them, mark them. And he says, not only do you mark them, he goes on to say in verse 14, mark that person and do not keep company with them that they, they may be ashamed. 
He says, don't keep company with them. Don't. He says, whatever you do, mark them. Make a note of it. This phrase, keeping company, uh, keeping company means to mix it up together. Keeping company means to have a intimate dealing with them as if you all are on one accord. He says, don't keep company with them. He says, whatever you do, make sure you don't mix it up with them. In other words, don't associate with them. From a biblical standpoint, it says, make sure you don't keep company with them and hang out with them as if they are following the word of God. For some people, that's pretty tough. But he's saying to us tonight, don't keep company with them. Don't mix it up with them that he may be ashamed, that that person may be ashamed. This word ashamed, this word ashamed simply means that they won't have the respect as those who walk in the word of God, that they will be put to shame, that they will not be revered as those who work and, and walk and live and give in the word of God, that they will be confound. He says, and this, this is something in the 21st century that we don't want to, we don't want to make people ashamed. We don't want to make people uh, become frustrated. We don't want to, to call them out. But the Apostle Paul says, note them, mark them, don't have company with them for the fellowship that they lack when you don't keep company with them, the fellowship that they lack, they will be shamed. <laughs> Good God of Mary. He says, don't keep company with them. Don't hang out with them. Don't fellowship with them because they may be ashamed. But God always gives grace and he brings up that grace in verse number 15. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse number 15. He, he says, yet do not count them as an enemy, but admonish them as a brother. Even though he says, don't, fellowship with them, he goes back to say, God's ha God has grace. And because God has grace, we ought to have grace. Mm -hmm. He says, admonish him as a brother. The disobedient one is not an enemy. He says, don't regard them as an enemy. He says, admonish them as a brother. They are not enemies. This word enemy means that you ought not hate them. They are not a foe. They are not an adversary. And he uses the word in the original passive form as the odious, odious, O-D-I-O-U-S, O-D-I-O-U-S. He, he uses this word for, he says, don't consider them as an odious one, an odious one. This odious one is one who is hostile. He says, don't throw them away. He says, always admonish them as a brother. He says, whatever you do, make sure you always consider them as a brother. Means to reprove them, to caution them as a brother. He says, make sure that you hold them accountable. The problem in these days is we hold nobody accountable. Everybody can just do what they want to do. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. The Apostle Paul said it doesn't work like that. He says someone has to hold you accountable and they must do it gently. Somebody has to keep it in your mind and put it in your mind when you're going astray from the word of God. In other words, there ought to be an intervention. Somebody ought to intervene. Somebody ought to call you aside and say, brother, let me just talk to you for a minute. I realize, and, and don't act like you don't know. Don't act like they're not wrong. He says, mark them. He says, make sure you tag them as being wrong. Don't fellowship with them. Don't hang out with them as if they're doing the right thing. He says, whatever you do, admonish them means to exhort them, 
admonish them as a brother, recognize them as a brother. God has grace because they are not enemies. They're not an adversary. They're not an odious one. They're not that ones that you ought to just forget about. But you ought to make sure that you mark them. You ought not have fellowship with them as you would have with other brothers. Mm -hmm. It's pretty strong that God will, will tell us that a brother that's not walking in the word, you are not fellowship with him. But it says in, in, in the book of Psalms that a godly man walks with other godly men. Psalm 1 talks about how blessed we are as we walk with the Lord, as we study the word of God, we meditate on it day and night. We become as a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. He says a tree, not a bramble bush. We're a tree. And wherever we're planted, God is able to bring the nutrients right to us. We have nutrition because God brings it to us. In other words, you cannot hang out to the point with a bramble bush when you're a tree. And it's all based on the word of God. Even though he says to not have company with them, to not hang out with them, not to have fellowship with them, he says, do not count them as an enemy. They're not somebody that's fighting against you. Jesus has said it well. When, when the disciples came to Jesus and said, there's somebody over there healing in your name. They're casting out demons in your, your name. They're, they're bringing people back to life in your name. Jesus says, if, they're, they're, if they are with us, it's all, all right. If they're not against us, then they're with us. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying to you today, there must be grace. We cannot walk around as if we got it all, we know it all, and the word of God is, is, is what we know and that's all we know because it gets sickening when people get super spiritual, so super spiritual until they can just cut everybody off. But in all reality, they are struggling with something themselves. One person wanted to know, Pastor Davis, why you always say that that. I fall short also. And then they begin to wonder, what Pastor David's falling short on? What, what is he struggling with? Well, I would be lying if I said to you that I'm not struggling with, with anything. I'm saying to you, not only am I struggling, you're struggling too. So don't make those who are, who are caught up and pulled away from this word, don't make them feel like they are an enemy. They are not enemies. They are people who struggle. So he says, don't count them as an enemy. And whatever you do, always admonish them as a brother or a sister in Christ Jesus. Verse 16, he calls us to the benediction. And verse 16 through 18, he has this salutation that he closes out with. This is the end of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. This is the end of chapter 3. It is the end of his letter to the Thessalonians. So he says in verse 16, now may the Lord of peace, the Lord of peace himself, give you peace always in every way. The Lord be with you all. The Apostle Paul closes out. He comes, these words are strategically written. Remember now, the Bible was not written in verses and it was not written in chapters and verses. It was written on a stroll. It was written on walls. It, it was a continual letter. So he's closing out this letter and he closes it out and he strategically puts verse 16 out of verse 15. He says in verse 15, yet do not count him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Then he says, now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. The Lord be with you. Remember, he's in the middle of a conversation. And in the middle of his conversation, he said to you, don't have fellowship with those who do not follow the word of God. But he also comes back and says, don't count them as an enemy because they are not the enemy. They are not an enemy and they are not the enemy. 
You see, the Bible teaches that there is only one enemy and he's walking around, he's flying around, he's existing in the midst of us, in the air, in heavenly places. He is influencing people. So what we do, we fight the wrong enemy. If he's a brother, if, he, if she's a sister, then they are not enemies. We have to get focused on the right enemy. We have to join forces and fight against the right enemy. When we get upset, we fight each other. When we ought to be joining forces to fight the enemy. The enemy is Satan. The, the enemy is Lucifer. The enemy is the adversary. He is the accuser of the brethren. So he says, now you have this brother and the sister. Admonish them as a brother and sister. Then verse 16, he says, now may the Lord of peace. He's saying, whatever you do, understand the master, the superior one, the Lord of peace himself, the Lord of peace. He's saying to us, we got to have peace with each other. We got to get to a state of quietness. The word peace means quietness. It means rest. It means to be at one with each other. And it also gives forth the implication of prosperity. The reason why some of us don't have rest, we don't have quietness, we don't have prosperity, is because everybody's our enemy. Somebody's always out to get us. If somebody's always out to get you, you will never have peace. So the Apostle Paul gives his benediction, gives his salutation. He closes out by saying, now may the Lord, this word Lord is master, Amen. the controller, the superior one, the supreme one. May the Lord, who is he? He's the Lord of peace. Why does he need to be the Lord of peace? Because you're not at peace. In order for us to be at peace, we have to commit our ways, our action to the Lord of peace, the Lord of peace himself. His name is Jesus. So he's the Lord of peace. If there's any trouble, if there's any turmoil, we need to submit ourselves to the Lord of peace. He is the only one who can give us rest. He's the only one who can quiet the storm. He himself, he says, verse 16, now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace. And how long are you going to give it to you? Always. How many things in all things? The Lord of peace is able. The Lord of peace is, is able and committed to give you peace. He is able to give you quietness. He's the Lord of peace. You can have confusion all around you and still be at rest, be at peace. See, we're concerned. We're always concerned, and I'm concerned also. We're always concerned about God stepping out, looking at the winds and the waves and saying, peace be still. And when he says, peace be still, we are used to the winds and the waves laying down and going to sleep and getting, giving us quietness. I just want to tell you tonight, not always does God calm the storm. He is the Lord of peace. He is the God of peace. The Lord of peace, Jesus himself, doesn't always calm the storm. Many times he just calms his child in the midst of the storm. I mean, things could be going crazy. They could be going haywire. You could be upset. Uh, things can be just totally pushing you around, but you have peace. That's because you're walking with the Lord of peace. Amen. That's because you live with the Lord of peace. That's because you're in love with the Lord of peace, the Lord of peace, the Lord of quietness. There may be a rage going on, but I still have peace. Amen. You need to have peace. You, in the midst of a rage, we, we are not exempt from from havoc. We're not exempt from war. We're not exempt from rage. But we want God in this trouble. Amen. God in the storm. He brings peace. How can you have tranquility in the midst of all that's going on? Because the Lord that I serve, he is the Lord of tranquility. He is the Lord of peace. 
He is the Lord of quietness. He is the Lord that puts me together and we become as one. Not only is he the Lord of peace, he's the Lord of prosperity. Now may the Lord of peace himself, nobody can do it but him himself. There, there's no one who's the Lord of peace other than himself, other than Jesus Christ. May the Lord of peace, he will guide you in your actions. He will grant you peace and he will unify the church. Amen. The church, just because it's a church, it doesn't have to be an uproar. Sometimes I think we get carried away with this statement that the church is a hospital for the wounded, a hospital for the sick. Sometimes I believe that we use that as an excuse to act up. That's why at the New Beginning Church, we don't have business meetings. We have vision meetings. <laughs> because in business meetings, just the, just the word business, just the phrase business meeting suggests we're going to have a fight. It's, it's, it's all, everybody's in an uproar. It, all things can go on because we get ready to throw down. We go into a business meeting tonight. And one thing I found out, when you have a business meeting, people who haven't been to church in years, they show up. People who've been sick for months, I'm a living witness. They show up. They come out with walking canes. They come out in wheelchairs. They come out in storms. People who can't come out when a drop of rain fall, when you have a business meeting, they're right there before the meeting begins. Yes. People who are normally late on Sunday, they're normally late on Wednesday, and some of them are normally late on the broadcast, and we're not even, they don't even have to get up and do anything but go in the living room or stay in the bedroom. They are still late, but when you have a business meeting, they are there looking for their agenda before the meeting begins. So we don't have business meetings at the New Beginning Church. We have vision meetings. And in our vision meetings, we are casting vision. We're showing, we're showing the people, and the people are discussing where God is going to take us. We're spending quiet time along with God. We, we're asking God to speak to us in our vision meetings. And now more than ever before, we need vision meetings and not business meetings. Mm -hmm. Because we want in the meeting, we want the, the Lord of peace to rule. And we want him to rule always. And we want him to rule in every way. The Lord be with you all is what the Apostle Paul closes out verse number, number 16. When he says, may the Lord himself be with you. May the Lord be with you. I'm going to tell you something, regardless of what things are, regardless of how things are going, whether it's good or bad, I want the Lord to be with me. Amen. Because if the Lord is not, if the Lord is not with me, then I'm a dangerous man. Mm. <laughs> I'm a day, even at my best, I'm dangerous if the Lord is not with me. So the apostle Paul said, the Lord be with you. How many of you? All of you. Right. He says, the Lord be with you. You ought to bid people farewell. We ought to bid people uh, God's speed. We ought to tell people, may the person of the respectful title of God, the Lord himself, the supreme one in authority, will he be with you? And if he's the supreme one in authority, then he can shut down the rage. He can shut down the war. He can shut down the storm. He can even shut down the, the sickness. He says, may the Lord of peace be with you. May the Lord of peace be in your proximity. Will the Lord of peace transfer? This word, this, this word be with, the, don't look over the word with. The Lord of peace be with you means that God will transfer his peace from him to you. God wants to transfer the peace that he had, he's the Lord of peace. He's the author of peace. He is the sustainer of peace. And he wants you to have peace. When you don't get what you want in your prayer life, when God doesn't operate on your timetable, he can transfer peace to you. And in the midst of all that's going on around you, you can still have peace. 
Now, God, I asked you for this last year. Now we're at the end of the year again. I asked you for this the previous year. We're at the end of the year again. I asked you this, Lord, for the last five years, the last 10 years, the last 20 years. But God, thank you for giving me peace. <laughs> if you didn't give me what I want, Lord, give me peace. Because the fact of the matter is there are pe people who have a master bedroom that's all decked out and cannot get an ounce of sleep because they have no peace. You need to trust in the Lord of peace. There are families that are so torn apart. There's no peace. You need to trust in the Lord of peace. And the Lord of peace will be with you forever and ever, always from now on. Verse 17, this is the salutation of Paul. And Paul says, I'm writing this salutation in my own words. Let's look at it. Verse 17, the salutation of Paul with my own hand, which is a sign in every epistle, so I write. The apostle Paul says, I close all my epistles out, all my letters. All the things that I write unto you, I'm closing them out this way. He says, this is how I close them out. Verse 18, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Mm -hmm. Paul, Paul says, this is my salutation. This is my closing. This is my sending you on. This is my pushing you to the next level. This is how I'm going to close it out. I am going to give you this salutation and I'm going to do it like I always do it. This word grace means graciousness. This word grace means it's, it's the influence of, of gratitude. This word grace means my acceptance. It, it means benefit. It means favor. It's a gift. It's a pleasure. Apostle Paul says, the grace of the Lord, the pleasure of the Lord be upon you. The favor of the Lord be upon you. <laughs> the liberation of the Lord, the freedom of the Lord be upon you. Apostle Paul closes this letter out in 2 Thessalonians. And he says unto you, may you have joy. May you have grace. May you have liberation. May you have pleasure. He says to us tonight, the grace of our Lord. Which Lord? Jesus Christ, that Lord. This word Lord is the one that's our master. He, he, is, he is our controller. If Jesus is not controlling you, somebody's controlling you. Amen. If somebody's not controlling you, something is controlling you. If you're not a slave to Jesus, you're a slave to the devil. Mm -hmm. Something or something has control over you. And my brothers and sisters, it doesn't have to be another man or another woman controlling you. There's an atmosphere, there, there's, a, there's a being in the realm, the spiritual realm that's controlling us. If it's not Jesus Christ, you need to get from under that control. Mm -hmm. Verse 18 closes out, says the grace, the, the pleasure of God, the favor of God, the favor of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. He said, he, closed, he closes this letter out and says, let it be with you. Pastor Paul writing this letter from Athens and he, he closes it out. He signs off. For the last time to the church at Thessalonica, he signs off and he leaves them with the grace of God. I've come tonight mm -hmm. to introduce you to the grace of God. If you never tried Jesus Christ as your personal savior, this is your moment, this is your opportunity, this is your chance to experience the peace of God and, and walk with God through the word of God because Paul says, I've written this with my own hands and this is how I close it out. He says, the grace of the, our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You can't call Jesus Lord until you get to call him Savior. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to get to know Jesus tonight. You need him to be your Savior. 
Savior means that he has rescued you or he will rescue you from a dying world. He will rescue you from hell. You see, hell was made for somebody. But I just don't believe it was made for you. You can miss hell tonight. You can be born again tonight. You can confess Jesus Christ as your Savior. And once you've received him as your Savior, he can be your Lord, meaning he can be your controller, your leader, your guide, and your protection. The door is open. The invitation is extended. The Apostle Paul says to us tonight, don't get weary in well-doing. And there may be somebody listen tonight that they cannot identify with being a brother or a sister in the Lord Jesus. This is your moment. This is your opportunity. You can be saved tonight. You can mark this date that you became born again from the word of God. And now God has become your Lord of peace. If this is you I'm talking to tonight, and you never received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you can do that right here, right now, tonight. You don't need to be in a church building. Wherever you're sitting, wherever you're standing, wherever you are lying, you can receive Jesus. If you would, just bow your head with me and invite him into your life. Believing that Jesus died for your sins over 2,000 years ago. Believing that Jesus died on an old rugged cross. Believing that he was killed by mean men on a skull hill called Calvary. If you can believe this story that mean men killed him on a cross over 2,000 years ago with you in mind, if you can believe that they took him off the cross and laid him in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because he didn't need it too long. It was a borrowed tomb because early that third day morning, Jesus rose from the dead. If you can believe this simple story, you can be saved right here, right now, tonight. My appeal to you tonight is to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If you want to receive him, just bow your head with me and and invite him into your life. Repeat after me and just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. Now come into my life and make me a new person. I believe that you died on Calvary. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and save my soul. Thank you, Lord, for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. We believe if you prayed that prayer and honestly believe that Jesus is the son of God, that he died for your sins, was buried in a barred tomb, rose early that third day morning, we believe that you're born again. And regardless of when you die, now or later, we believe that you are saved and you're on your way to heaven. Now there are others of us who have been saved, who are saved, but we have not committed ourselves to the righteous word of God. That's the ones that the Bible talks about here tonight. That you are a brother, you are a sister in Christ. But you're not following what is written in God's word. I want to pray with you tonight. Will you join me in prayer? Father God, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for you giving us another chance. For giving us another opportunity to come before you. Lord, we are saved. We are born again. We have trusted Jesus as our Savior. But for some reason or the other, Lord, we've not done the things that are pleasing in your sight. We ask you to forgive us for it. Bless our lives. Keep us strong. We rededicate. We renew. 
we repent. We come before you, Lord, realizing that you are God. You are God alone, and we want you to be our Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving us. And now, Lord, we thank you for lording over us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We believe that you need a church home in times like these. And if you do not have a church home, or you are in between church homes, or you are looking for a church home, I recommend to you the New Beginning Church, where Jesus is the center of attack, attention, where Jesus is the main attraction, where Jesus is the Lord where he is the Lord of peace at the New Beginning Church. If you want to join our church, please inbox me and let me know. We'll be glad to welcome you to the family of faith. If you pray for repentance tonight, inbox me and let me know. I want to rejoice with you. And if you've received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, tonight on this broadcast, please inbox me and let me know. I surely want to celebrate with you as the angels in heaven are celebrating. Thank you so much for joining us tonight here at the New Beginning Church at our remote location. We're looking forward to seeing you on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. at 4251 Shiramai Road, Houston, Texas, 77048 USA. We're looking forward to seeing you. Not only that, we're looking forward to seeing you at 9 a.m. for Sunday school and 1030 a.m. for worship service. We're usually out before 12, so come on and fellowship with us. Uh, break bread with us in Sunday school and keep joining us on Wednesday night at 7.15 and then show up at 10.30 a.m. It's a small amount of time to pay for the kingdom of God and how God has blessed us. We look forward to seeing you, look forward to fellowshipping with you, looking forward to you being a part of New Beginning Church. On our prayer list tonight, we're praying continually for Sister Brenda Atanga. We're lifting her up in prayer that God will bless her health, bless her strength. We're also praying for Brother Edgar Henderson. We're praying that, that God will continue to bless him and heal his body. We're praying that God will continue to bless him and continue to walk with him. We're praying for young people that they will begin to make godly decisions. Bless God for those who have made godly decisions that they will continue to make godly decisions. We want to make sure that we lift them in prayer on our, our prayer meeting on tonight. Also, we want to pray for our youth and our young people who are in school and for our seniors who are working. We, we want to lift them before Christ. And uh, we are giving away AIDS, giving away money for AIDS for all our young people who are in school. Today we're celebrating Sister Johnny Wood's birthday. She's the oldest member of the New Beginning Church. She's the oldest member of New Beginning Church. So we're celebrating Sister Johnny Wood's birthday today, November 3, 2021. We're celebrating her birthday. We're, we're lifting her before the Lord. She's strong. And the Lord, and we, we pray that she's strong in her health, that the Lord will keep her and continue to bless her. Let me say a special thanks to those of you who have, have participated in your giving to the Rose. We want to thank you for, for giving to the Rose. The Rose is an early detection of breast cancer by way of mammogram. And what the Rose does, they offer mammograms for those who have um, who have insurance and they offer mammograms for those who do not have insurance. But for those who do not have insurance, they have to get money from those of us who have insurance as well as those of us who would contribute. Therefore, we had a 10K walk, ride, and cycling event this past Saturday. So uh, we, our goal was to raise $5,000 for the Rose. Our goal was to raise $5,000 for the Rose so three entities united their forces to raise this money, Turning Hearts Ministries, His Path Cycling, and the New Beginning Church. 
And again, I want to thank our visitors and thank our members for of all those, all three of those entities, Turning Hearts Ministries, New Beginning Church, and His Path Cycling. I'm happy to, to announce tonight, up to this point, as of last week, beginning last week up to this point, one week later, we have raised $3,200. $3,200 for the rose that will pay for a lot of mammograms for women who do not have insurance. So thank you so much. And if you still want to give to The Rose, you can do so by going on therose.org. Hit the donate button and tell them that you're coming because we referred you from the New Beginning Church, that you're coming to give. Any amount of money that you want to give, please feel free to give it. And they will be thankful that you've given it. Tell them that, that Pastor Matthew Davis at the New Beginning Church has referred you to The Rose. So make sure that you hit the donate button. It's therose.org, therose.org. Please, ma'am, please, sir, continue to give that we can continue to, to make a way for people who do not have insurance that, that they can have mammograms taken. It is offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It's time to give to the Lord. Thank you, visitors, for visiting with us. We're asking you to not only visit with us, but to give financially to the New Beginning Church. You can give tonight. Members and visitors, you can give tonight by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com is our Zelle account. And also, you can mail your offering in to... Uh, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part. Let us end in prayer. And as we lift these in prayer that we requested prayer for, please, ma'am, please, sir, continue to lift each other in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, Father God, to come before you. We thank you, Father God, that you blessed us with your word. We thank you for every giver. We thank you for every person that's looking for a place to give. We thank you for leading them to the New Beginning Church. Bless every person to have a heart to give. And Lord, we pray for Sister Brenda Artunga. We pray for Brother Edgar Henderson. We pray, Father God, that you continue to bless them and heal their body. Strengthen them as only you can, Father God. Bless them, Father God, that they will see you and glorify your name. Raise them up again, Father God, as only you can. We ask you to heal in the name of Jesus. We pray for our youth and our young people that they will make great decisions, that they will make high quality decisions. They will make righteous decisions. Father God, we pray that you bless them and keep them. We thank you for Sister Johnny Woods. We thank you, Father God, for long life. We thank you, Father God, for her endurance as she marched toward 100 years. We thank you that she's at our church. We thank you, Father God, that she's a faithful member. We ask you to bless our youth and our young people as they matriculate through school. Bless them, Father God, that they will be safe and that their minds will be alert and they will be manable with good conduct. And Lord, we thank you, Father God, for the New Beginning Church. We thank you for who you are and for what you do through us and with us. We ask you to continue to bless us. Now we pray that you bless this offering. Bless us, Father God, and bless every giver and bless the gift. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. We at the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.